So you want to tell the truth I or know. not? You have hired uh, Mr. Kimler? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Put your chair up. Thank, thanks. That's the display here. Next is Jacory uh, Cornmeal, 23CR1445. Jacory Cormier. There is no answer in the courtroom. I asked the bailiffs and call into the hall for Jacory Cormier. What is uh, Cormier's bond, please? There's no response to that name. Jacory Cormier called in the courtroom. The bailiff is called into the hall. There is no response. Defendant has failed to appear. A warrant will be issued for his arrest. His bond was originally $25,000. It is doubled to $50,000 plus. His bond is revoked. It is now $50,000 plus. He must have a GPS device so we know where he is when he's not in court well, like he's supposed to be. Is that the only shirt you have? You'd be wear that to church? No, sir. I wouldn't either. This is kind of important too. It's not church, but it's you're looking at up to two years in the state jail and kind of like want to show respect for the whole process. You're charged with felony theft. On or about August 20th, 2021. What is your address? 24603 Windfall Path, Spring Texas. Was it, it, was it Spring Texas? Was it ever 23406 Windfall Path? That's the address. That's not what you just said. 24603 Windfall Path, Listen closely. Was it ever 23406 Windfall Path? Yes. Yes, sir. Say that again now. What's your address? 24600. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm saying is I'm saying your address shows 23406. Oh well, no, that's not my address. I said that three times. So you okay. That's what it's showing on the indictment. What is it? Was it ever that? Did you move? Yes, sir. Okay. Was it two, three, four, zero, six, two years ago? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Okay. Wow. Man, that was a hard one to get out. You know? Just have a seat. We're going to work on something. Have a seat right over there, please. Thank you. All right. 21372007 is called the state of Texas versus Alan J. Watson III. That's you, sir? Yes. Earlier. You were sentenced on October 30th, 2023 for the uh, second degree felony of burglary of a habitation. You were sentenced to 10 years in prison and a motion for imposition of community supervision or motion for probation uh, to change this from confinement to a probation term was filed by your attorney, Mr. Dusler. The state is going to contest this, but go ahead, Mr. Dusler. Your Honor, this motion was filed uh, at the court for recommendation at the time. Uh, he was, uh, his probation was revoked in October of last year, and he was sentenced uh, to 10 years TDC. It was primarily revoked because of drug issues, uh, which he has attempted to address. And the underlying case itself, the burglary of habitation, basically was drug related as well, where he was found uh, in one of his neighbor's uh, uh, homes asleep late at night. Uh, there was a question of whether there was any intent to burglarize, but uh, because he was found there at the court, uh, uh, and, and everyone, everyone felt that it was appropriate to, uh, to have him placed on probation at the time. Uh, he's, as I understand it, he's done well while he's been in prison and uh, feels like that he can successfully complete probation. He's asking for it to grant this motion. Okay. Earlier in the case, uh, a motion to revoke probation was filed, and I don't know why it's not back in August. And the defendant pleaded true to allegations one and two of the motion. In, uh, on August 24th, those being uh, committing the offense of illegal possession of a controlled substance and unlawfully carrying a weapon. And uh, therefore, the defendant's deferred or unadjudicated probation was revoked. He was then found guilty of the underlying crime of burglary of habitation and sentenced to 10 years in prison. 
So here we are. What says the state in response? Uh, Your Honor, the state is obviously the opposition because the uh, defendant pleaded true to committing the offense of possession of controlled substance, second degree felony while he's on probation. And that case was dismissed in consideration for the defendant being uh, sentenced to the penitentiary in this case, as well as a misdemeanor uh, unlawful carrying of a weapon that was also dismissed in consideration for the defendant being sentenced in this case. Okay. One and two, were those ever filed? Uh, allegations one and two, the possession of controlled substance, unlawfully carrying a weapon on or about February 15th of 2023. A year yes, ago. Your Honor. They it was were, indicted. They were, they were indicted they and were, then they were later dismissed yes, sir. as in agreement of this. Well, there was no agreement. It was it was just dismissed by the state. There was no agreement. At the time. If we dismissed it in consideration for him being sentenced at that time, uh, not holding the case out there uh, if he wasn't going to. All right. Uh, so, if well, what's to prevent the state from resurrecting those cases? There's no deal. I don't, I don't, think, they were, I don't think they were filed by the dismissal with prejudice. Okay. So they could refile them if they wanted they to. to. If they're two felony offenses. Well, no, one was a step up. One's a UTW. That was a misdemeanor. What, what was in the controlled substance meth meth found in the child's child's backpack in the cargo area of the vehicle the meth was being transported via child's back backpack which is pretty low all right would you want to say anything yeah no, it was a very humble experience i apologize for coming back in the courtroom again so so I made a big mistake, and I just... Well, it was a series of mistakes. You, you made yes. a mistake when we first gave you that chance on yes, burglary sir. of a habitation. That's... Yes, sir. And then you weren't on probation long before you pick up two, you know, a felony offense and a UCW. Yeah, but it was... I mean, it has all the, all the elements of drug trafficking. <laughs> what kind of probation are you on when you... You're, you're doing that. What are you asking for? Tom? I'm asking that the court uh, grant the motion uh, and place him back on probation, let him continue his probation, which was originally granted in 2008. And the state's position is? Just that the court uh, uphold the original sentence that was uh, handed down. I, I don't have anything really in, in my lap that get, shows any reason why that should be granted. Other than other than what we've been the work state, you're on the same file. It's denied. Mm -hmm. Serious offense, but more serious is drug trafficking and then using child backpacks as a method of a drug trafficking tool. That's on my watch. That is all. <laughs> the motion is denied. Thank you. Don, what do you have next? That's all. That's all. Thank you. I have Daniel Cranmer, who's um, Jacory Cormier. That you come on up, Mr. Cormier. Can we have this file, please. You you uh, failed your drug test. You've got marijuana in your system. What is his bond? I'm listening. Bond is twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, your bond is revoked, sir. It is now uh, it is now fifty thousand dollars. You'll be taken into custody. You have to have a drug patch now as a condition of bond. And where were you on the docket this morning? Yes, and it's, you don't have an attorney yet? No, sir. I was gonna hire uh, Mr. Kimmel. Yeah. How's that gonna work out now if you have to pay a fifty thousand dollar bond? I mean, uh, it's gonna, I mean, is uh, that all gone now? Sir. Are you able to uh uh, hire him um, anyway, yes, sir. Are you going to be able to hire him? I mean, yes, sir. With this, I got to uh, do whatever I got to do. Yeah, to yeah. Pay. I've got to re. We're going to review this in two weeks too. Please, thank you. I'm um, I'm just going to be hired on with the company that I was working. All right, let's go back here. Yeah, you, you know, my advice is don't use drugs anytime, much less being on bond. Quintavious Neal. Yeah, you flunked yours too. Where's his file, please? 
three eight three four three. What is uh, I need his bond? You tested positive for THC uh, marijuana as well. Your bond is revoked, and you're going to need a drug patch. You're going to be in held in custody. And what was his bond? Looks like eighty five hundred. Is that right? Eight thousand five hundred. It is double to seventeen thousand dollars. Plus, you have to have a drug patch as a condition of bond. I'll review him in two weeks too. Yes, sir. <laughs> on Julian Perez, two weeks. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. Julian Perez, come on up. You failed your drug test, as you know. Yeah. It's marijuana day. Do you have his file, please? Thank uh, you. Yes, sir. A way to argue just from my class. <laughs> first appearance of court. This is the way you want to handle this case? Yes. This is the way? This is irresponsible, sir. What's his bond, please? Um, it's going to cost somebody. Are you paying this or are your parents? Sir? You're paying all of this yourself? It's going to cost you some money. Bond is $20,000. Bond is hereby revoked. It's now $40,000. Plus, you have to have a GPS, uh, I'm sorry, a drug patch as a condition of bond. That's just, now you're just getting deeper. This is no way to be responsible in handling a mistake, which is the test on whether you can fix a mistake, which is grown-up behavior. You're not doing it very well. You're taken into custody, sir. Andrea Shelton. So we just had that. That's her, the lady. Reginald Allison, come on up. You failed your drug test, and you uh, tested uh, positive as well today for THC or marijuana. What is his bond, please? 15,000. Your bond of 15,000 is hereby revoked. You uh, will be taken uh, into custody. It will be doubled to $30,000, and you need a drug patch as a condition of bond. Yes, yeah, what were you going to say? He didn't want to respond, Your Honor. Uh, we had talked earlier about this. He maybe even failed drug test. He was unaware that he'd be drug tested today, so we uh, would ask the court to to uh, give a plan to keep them on bond. Uh, no. What about? No, I, I, yeah, I'm going to. So, uh, I, mean, I don't understand. You want to be tipped off when you're going to be drug tested? Is that what you want to do? Uh, you you, you want to be forewarned so that you don't take drugs? No, your bond condition, number one, is is don't commit a crime. Yes, sir. It's okay. illegal right, to uh, like illegally. Black use drugs and that's your problem and you're not the first one today there's been five or six people yes, sir. who think they can use drugs well i mean this is no way to fix your problem you're on you got an important charge here and you're not dealing with it responsibly you're just getting hot yeah uh yes uh it's been almost two weeks i have been losing a job i just started a new job yesterday i wasn't able to go because i had to go to court today and also, uh, I'm standing by the drug test. Yes, sir. That's yeah. understandable. But uh, you're, you're, it, or if you're around it, I'd run like the wind. You could smell it. I'd get away from it. Yes, sir. It's, funny. it's not funny. There's nothing funny about this. He's one about more, to lose his freedom. One more thing. Uh, even though, He's laughing. Okay. Even, even though that I paid everything on my bond, I still have to start over and pay again. Yes, sir. That's what happens when you lose your bond. That's It's a... I know that's it frustrates me because I want you to fix you make a mistake and you fix it responsibly, but you you're not fixing it responsibly by continuing to use drugs or being around drugs. I think I can check question. Yeah, that's it hurts. It stings. Yeah, it, it, you, you, and in all cases, bonds are revoked. They're doubled, and then you have to have a. You also have to pay for a drug patch now. Yeah. yeah. You're always good. Okay. All right. Can you speak to Mother Bond? How can I speak to him? He's got the Who is it? Trakeela Palmer. Where are you? Is that you? 
What's your problem? Kevin's alpha positive. He tested positive for amphetamine and opiates. Mm -hmm. 7,500, your bond is revoked. A warrant is issued for you. You shall be taken into custody, and your bond is now $15,000. You must need to have, must. Don't interrupt the court because we're trying to write things here, and she can't write it when you keep rudely interrupting. And let me finish, and bond is in the amount of $15,000 and a uh, uh Drug patch must be attached. Yeah, go ahead. Your Honor, uh, she's currently on probation right Here, now, felony please. probation, and she has a prescription for those. Uh, uh, for amphetamines? Uh, yes. I want to know. Well, uh, let's see them. She says she, uh, the, the probation department has that. So uh, No, they firm, don't. Uh, they, they may have copies. You have to have them at all times. You're testing positive. That's your problem. Yeah. Um, I want to know who's, uh, you know, who's prescribing amphetamine to her. And opiates. If we get the prescription branch in your yard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. Okay. But she's in custody. Somebody's got to get it. Done. I'm not no, leaving her amble out of here. No, 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 no. But she's got somebody that can get it. And I can bring it to you this afternoon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Who else are we? Okay. Let's tequila. I have Paul Bernard and on, Brayley yeah. Oliver. Oh, and Judge, the other drug test. Hold on. Brayley. Uh, Brayley Oliver, come on up. Did you get a resetting? You can go. Uh, I, I have not a resetting. Here. Oliver, hasta luego. Thank you, Judge. Yes, sir. The court does call the case of the people versus Raphael Grabowski. Good morning, Your Honor. David I. Goldstein appearing on behalf of the defendant. And what were we intending on doing today? Well, Your Honor, I, well, there's two things. One is a pretrial, and I was also informed prior to today that there was a violation. There so it is correct. Yeah, I'd like to address the violation first, if that's okay with the court. That would be what I think needs to happen. Well, Your Honor, uh, Ms. Reiser and I did have an opportunity to review the, the, uh, the violation report. I did indicate to my client that on two occasions, one in February and one in March, there was a small amount of alcohol in his system. I'm going to assume for the sake of argument that all of his other tests were, were uh, there was no positive result. Um, Your Honor, I explained it to my client. My client indicated to me that he does use uh, on occasion mouthwash. Uh, and on those two occasions, that's why there was a small amount of alcohol in his system. The court notes that I believe I don't have well, that. That's what he told you. Yes. And that's why you're relating that to me. That's exactly right, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor. Uh, Keep going, please. I'm sorry? Keep going. Okay, I don't have Keep the report in the... front of me, but I believe both of those were in the evening. It's, it's part of his evening Here, process. You can look at it. Because those, I did. did you? Did you? Because those are, what kind of mouthwash? Point oh two one and point oh two three is that what you're referring to, Your Honor? Yeah, but then what is more disconcerting with the excuse that your client is giving you that you are relating to the court is is that then there is a retest. So that mouthwash was hanging around for a while. Well, Your Honor, let's see, eleven thirty two, about a half an hour on this one, and it was going down, and about a half an hour. Well, yeah, a little bit more than half an hour on this one, and it was also going down. Uh -huh. Those are the same days? No, one is on the 25th, yeah. and one's on the 22nd, for February 25th and March 22nd. Yeah. The, the, the one, the one that, like, I, you don't tell oh, me, tell oh, me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah approach sure. I get it. <clears throat> I get it, I get it. So the, um, the, the first one was after, I know was February was at the football game. Um, it was what? I'm watching the NFL football game. Yeah, I watched, I watched the game. Um, I went in, uh, brushed, and um, right away blew, and it didn't register. So then I waited till uh, the required time and watched another TV show, and and then blew then blew a compliant test. 
And then the second one was um, after I waited the 30 minutes after popcorn brushed, uh, rinsed my mouth again, then waited 10 minutes, and then, and then blew, and it's worked. Your Honor, so, I, so then I waited for retest, and the retest was okay. Your Honor, after looking at the report again, I noticed that both tests were in the evening. I, I'm assuming since there are no other tests referenced, all the morning tests were, were negative, and all the other evening tests were negative except for those two. That's all I can say at this year, time, Your Honor. I've never heard of mouthwash lingering that long, first of all. And that mouthwash, particularly as it's being described, would hang around that long to blow numbers. And I'll be honest with you, I don't believe it. Okay. At all. But if that's your story, then that's a story you're going to give me, and then I got to do what I got to do. Is that really what happened? Yeah, I, know. I was up, I was up late watching football. Yes, with my girlfriend. I I don't doubt that. I'm just saying you're saying that's the reason for the alcohol. Is that what you're telling me? That's what I want to tell you. Okay, I understand what you want to tell me. No. I also I also understand. I didn't just wake up yesterday and start doing this. So I want to make sure that that's what you want to tell me. Well. Before I do what I have to do. There, if that's your story. No, sir, that is not. That is not what? That is not my story. Okay. I, I, so now you have lied to the court. You lied to your attorney so that they could lie to the court. So you want to tell the truth I, or not? I was my, with my girlfriend while we were watching. What'd you do? Had a glass of wine, split, had a glass of wine with my girlfriend. On t- both of these occasions. She drinks wine. Yeah. That's what I thought happened. You actually drank. So if you did that, why'd you lie? Um, because I all the other times that was good. I haven't I haven't touched, I haven't wanted. Oh, oh I know. That so honestly she why did you lie? Because um I knew it was wrong. What? I knew it was wrong to have the glasses of wine with her. So why didn't you just admit that you had it? Um, it was, because see, now what I have to do is I have to then release you, theoretically, on an operate. I have to release you, theoretically. You're here on an OWI second. Mm-hmm. I put you on testing or monitoring system below numbers. Then you come before the court and you lie to me. What? I apologize to the court. Amen. What were we intending on doing on the case? Your Honor, uh, I did have an opportunity to discuss the matter with Ms. Reiser. We were going to ask for about a 30-day adjournment. She indicated she was not going to make an offer until my client earned earned an offer. Uh, Yeah. This this probably didn't help. Ms. Reiser knew this about this, Your Honor, before she made that comment. Yes, I'm sure she did. I guess it wouldn't be wise to adjourn this out 30 days. I'll adjourn this matter to April 17, 2021 at 9 a.m. Or as your invite indicates, I will find that the defendant violated his bond conditions of no alcohol use. Um, the defendant's bond will be set at $25,000. I'll give a 10% privilege at this time on it. But defendant, if he posts that bond, cannot be released from custody without a scram tether. And it must be in place. Defendant is remanded.